Hey everyone, welcome back to another BJC video. I'm Mr. G and today we're gonna to be looking at a request. So we're gonna be doing unit five, lab one, page four, exactly how much faster is binary search. So uh, we're gonna go through this lab and see what it is uh, that people might've gotten stuck on or what it is that they wanna hear about. So let's, uh, let's go through it. We're gonna compare the times required for binary search and for linear search in this one, using that computation time block that, uh, that I saw a few videos ago. So step one, we're gonna locate that linear search block that is included in our project uh, and look inside it. So let's, uh, let's look inside this linear search block and see how it works. So it, uh, it takes in two inputs, it has two uh, parameters here, uh, value and data, data being a list and value just being uh, whatever. It doesn't have a type, so we could put in whatever in there. And then what it does is it goes through each item in data and checks to see if the item that it's looking at in the data from the data set um, equals the value that we're looking for. And if it does, if it ever finds out that um, one of the items equals the value that we're looking for, it just reports back true and the, the, um, the function ends right there. Um, otherwise, if we go through this entire for each and we never find a match, then it'll just report back false. And I see that it's, this is all enclosed inside of warp. And um, I think what warp does is it just does it like quicker for some reason, somehow. Let me... Uh, let me see if it actually tells us how uh, warp works. Runs fast, doesn't draw any intermediate steps. Um, so yeah, so I guess warp just runs a lot faster. It probably goes at warp speed. Maybe that's why they uh, picked that name. So it'll just run this, uh, this a lot faster. Um, and compare it to the algorithm used to count the number of five or seven letter words. So it's gonna be very similar, um, except in that one we used uh, this, uh, this block. Does blank have number of letters? Uh, and so we could, <clears throat> in the conditional statement, we, uh, we used that block instead of checking equality. Uh, so let's see, this block does the same computation as, as a binary search block, but it uses the linear algorithm. And just for those of you that may not know what an, a linear algorithm is, we're basically going through the entire list one by one. So uh, no matter how many items there are, no matter whether it's sorted or not, we're able to look at every single item in the list that we have provided until we find a match. Okay? Uh, so fine, we did that. We did number one. We're on our way. Uh, step two is to use the computation time of block to test how much time a linear search takes to find the word zebra in each length list. Okay, so there are going to be... We're gonna do three computations here. So let's, uh, let's make three duplicates of that, or two duplicates, so we have three of them. And we're gonna to check to see, we're gonna do a linear search for zebra. Let me make this a little bit smaller, because we don't, I don't think we even need that. Uh, let me just duplicate the linear search. And we're gonna be searching for zebra. Let me just make those copies. And we're gonna be looking in the, in each length list. So we could start with 1,000 words, 10,000, or 100,000. So why don't we start with, uh, I'm just gonna do the 10,000 words one, but when you do it yourself, do the um, do all of them and write down on your sheet, um, or wherever your teacher wants you to keep track of this, make sure you write this down uh, somewhere so you can keep track of the times, because those are probably gonna come in handy. Oops, I think I uh, messed that up. So we're gonna look for zebra in each of these. We're just gonna do it for 10,000 words. Uh, I shouldn't say that. We're gonna do it for all of them. Oh, I just deleted my 10,000 words. That's okay. Okay, and I deleted my 100,000 words, but I still have the duplicates over here, so I could just uh, I could just quickly duplicate them. And, and here we go. Let's uh, see the computation time for 1,000 words. 12 milliseconds uh, for 10,000 words, 42 milliseconds, and for 100,000 words, 82 milliseconds. I'm gonna just gonna run it one more time because sometimes I notice that when I when I do these uh, run these functions like multiple times, it goes a little bit faster. So now it did the first one in two milliseconds, two three milliseconds. Uh, the next one is in 20ish milliseconds, so it took about 10 times as long which is kind of what we expect if the if uh, 1000 takes uh, 
two milliseconds, then 10,000 should take about 20. And 100,000 should take 10 times longer than that. That should be about 200 milliseconds. Uh, but actually it doesn't. It's only taken about 80, 77, it's around 80 milliseconds. So let me see for 10,000 words if it goes lower. Wow, so that's pretty interesting that, um, that in 100,000 words, it, it takes only four times longer than 10,000 words. That could also be because uh, Z, the, the position of zebra in that list, I don't think these words are sorted. So, you know, zebra might be, um, might be a little bit closer to the beginning in the 100,000 words list uh, as compared to the 1,000 or the, the 10,000. Okay, so... Once we've done that, how would you describe what happens to the time as the input gets bigger? So we could tell that you know the time is getting longer because it's gotta it's gotta go through each item in this in these words in these list of words t until it finds zebra. So that takes uh, it takes a little bit longer with the linear search, actually quite a bit longer, um, I guess depending on how many words you have. The amount of uh, physical time that it takes to solve a problem depends not only on your algorithm, but also on how fast your computer is and what other programs you have running and stuff like that. Uh, therefore, computer scientists want to measure the speed of an algorithm, do so in the terms of the number of steps. For example, what we really want to know about the efficiency of the linear search algorithm is how many times current item is compared to value. So that is how many times current item equals value is called. Okay, so when we were looking inside of our uh, linear search, we were, were trying to see how many times this, uh, this comparison is going to be made when we're trying to figure out the efficiency of our algorithms. You know, uh, getting the actual milliseconds, the computation time is great, but it's not, it's not really how computer scientists analyze algorithms or their efficiencies. We really are thinking more in terms of like, uh, of steps and like, uh, mathematical or algebraic steps. I would just say mathematical steps. We're not, we're not trying to give an exact empirical answer, like, like running it, because this could be different. It could be different if I run it on a different computer. Um, so if my computer is a little bit slower, it's going to be different than, than uh, someone else's answer. But, I, but the number of steps is still the same, even at the, regardless of the speed of the computer. So let's see, add another column to your table. Assuming zebra is the last word in each word list, how many comparisons are made by the linear search algorithm? So, I mean, if they're telling you to assume that zebra is the last word, then you know that in a list of, ten, of 1,000, uh, the last word will be 1,000 searches. So it's gonna take 1,000 steps before it could find that, uh, that answer or that word. Uh, for 10,000 words, it's going to be uh, the last word. So once again, 10,000 steps. And then, uh, and then for 100,000 words, it's going to be 100,000 steps. Actually, it's going to be even more steps than 100,000 steps. Um, because if you think about it, when, when it goes through the linear search, um, it, it, it's, it has to pull in the item, then it has to throw it into the conditional, and then it has to check to see if the, if the item equals the value um, and just, and it just has to go through that process. So you might, we we're saying like one step, like, you know, just the comparison. Oh, it's in the hundredth word or the hundred thousandth word. But, but in reality, inside of this function, you know, there might be a few steps before we actually even get to the comparison. So it's, it could be even worse than that. Um, but we can ignore those like details and just keep, to keep it simple, you know, the, the length of the list is the number of steps it's going to take potentially. Uh, so how would you describe what happens to the number of steps as the input list gets bigger? Um, well, what we could say is that uh, it is growing at, the, at a linear rate. So, you know, if there's, if there's a million uh, words, then it's going to be a million steps if the word is the last one. Um, so it, the, the number of steps it takes is growing linearly, is what I would say for that. Uh, does what happen with steps match what happens with time. That is, can you count steps as a measure of time? So I would say no uh, for that one, for number six, just because we saw that <clears throat> uh, 100,000 words was not 10 times longer than 10,000 words. And I, I, I mean, I'm guessing that the reason for that is because, um, is because zebra is not the last word in all of these lists. Uh, we could check, but I just don't think that that's the case. That's probably why it's not uh, 200 milliseconds. 
but uh, but if it's not, then there might be a reason for that that I don't I don't fully understand that I don't know. Uh, the relationship between the input size and the number of steps required to solve the problem is the efficiency of the algorithm used to solve the problem. So counting the number of steps as you just did is an informal but good way, but perfectly good way to determine the efficiency of an algorithm. The formal measurement of an algorithm requires a mathematical proof. So that is kind of what I was mentioning before that we we would use math to um, to show this. In this course, you'll be mostly working with small problems, so it doesn't matter how efficient the algorithm is. Yeah, so really, you're not going to face problems until you start dealing with a lot of numbers or a lot of uh, like billions or trillions of uh, of numbers, and then then it really does matter how efficient your algorithm is. Um, so in the beginning, you know, you could you could get away with with having inefficient algorithms, but as as you scale up, as you scale up the number of items that you're looking at in your lists uh, or lists of lists, you really got to come up with much better ways. You got to be clever about how you do things. Uh, now, test how much a binary search takes to find the word zebra in the sorted lists and determine how many comparisons are made by the algorithm if zebra is the last word in each length list. Okay, so uh, do, they, do they give me a sorted list? Okay, I guess my issue here is that I don't, I don't really want to sort the, um, the words every single time. So like just running the sort will take some time. So uh, that might not be the best way to do things. As you saw, it, it just takes time to, to sort the words first um, before running the, uh, the binary search algorithm on them. Uh, so what could we do? I guess what we could do is, um, let me see, does, uh, yeah, the words are not sorted, so we have to sort them first. So I guess what we have to do is we have to create sorted variables. Unless I'm missing something, maybe I'm not seeing, oh, there we go. The, the the words are already sorted inside of the variables palette, so we could uh, we could just grab the the sorted versions, so we don't have to sort them uh, ourselves. And what we're going to do is instead of doing a linear search, we're going to do a binary search for each of them. Uh, for zebra, and we're going to do a thousand words. We're going to do ten thousand words, and we're going to do a hundred thousand words. And we're gonna we're gonna compare the times and see how that how that plays out. So not a thousand, we need 10,000. And not 1,000, we need 100,000 down here. So let me just make sure that we have enough space to be able to see uh, what the times are. Let me uh, click the computation time block. One millisecond. So with 1,000 sorted words, we were able to find zebra in one millisecond. One, two, zero. I mean, zero milliseconds is probably just coming up because maybe it's really, really fast, less than a millisecond. Okay, uh, let's try 10,000 words. Uh, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Okay, so that is also just as fast, or it feels like it's just as fast as 10,000 words. And for 100,000 words, we're getting zero, one, I saw a two in there. So it looks like, it's almost like no matter how many words you have, it's going to take about the same amount of time. So you could write down in your binary search time column that, you know, this is happening pretty quickly, like, you know, between zero and two milliseconds for each of them. But if we think about the number of steps, then we have to think about how we are like going through these words or how we're searching through the words. So if you recall back in the first page of this lab, I believe, or maybe it was a previous video that I'll, I'll link up in the card above. Um, I went through how a binary search works. And basically every single step, we are reducing the total number of words in half that are available to look through. So after just one step, we'll go from 1,000 words to 500 words. Um, after two steps, we'll go down to 250 words. After three steps, we're going to go down to 125 words. And so you can see that every single step we take, we're decreasing the number of available possibilities in half. So that is going to look way different than a linear search, which is increasing, like, you know, linearly. This is going to be increasing at a different rate. Um, same thing with 100,000 words. You know, if we, if we do one step, we're down to 50,000 words. Two steps, we're down to 25,000. And pretty quickly, in just a few steps, we're down to a thousand words to look at. So, you know, you could do the math. That's basically what you're doing. You're you're cutting in half every single time. 
uh, until you get down to one. So worst case scenario, you're just going to have to keep chopping it down in half every single time, uh, every single step until you reach uh, one. And then you'll have your answer. But it'll take much less or it'll take many less steps or much less steps. I don't know how you would say that. Um, than doing a linear search, which is going to increase as the length increases quite a bit. Okay, so describe what happens to the time and the number of steps as your input list gets bigger. I pretty much just described it, um, but you could write down your own hypothesis on what I just mentioned or just on how I described it. And then look back at your tables for the linear search and the binary search. So let me just make sure that I'm not in the way here. There we go. Uh, look back at your tables for the linear search and the binary search algorithm and compare the two search algorithms. Which has more blocks in its code? Which runs faster for larger inputs? Which algorithm is more efficient? Write down your thoughts. So let us look inside the binary search algorithm, actually. So uh, this is basically how it's doing it. We're, we're looking at the, um, we're creating script variables, low, high, uh, the current index, the current item. And we're go th going through this really quickly. We're just basically chopping it in half every single time uh, by setting the low and the high to the, I guess, the midpoint of the data set. Uh, yeah, right there with the average. So we could do the average of the low and the high. Uh, and then we just keep doing this. And every single step we take is decreasing the number of possibilities in half. So, you know, if you do the math, you'll see how quickly uh, it, it, it narrows down the search. So it'll be very easy and very fast to find zebra, assuming that the list is sorted. So just remember that, that if, if, you're, if your list is not sorted, if your list of words aren't sorted, the binary search is, uh, is not going to work because you're just going to be, uh, you're not going to be able to find it. You need to have a linear search in, a, in an unsorted list. So, uh, so I guess I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope this uh, gave you better insight on what's going on behind the scenes and helps you out with your lab.